The Twin Servers is a super powerful feature of Roblox that lets you easily add animations to objects in your game. So this door over here, the opening and closing animations were created with the Twin Servers. The same is true for the opening and closing animations for this sliding door. I actually created these two doors in two previous videos, so be sure to check those out after this one. As you can see, there's also a white frame on screen. When I mouse over it, it jumps up in size. Then when the mouse leaves the box, jumps down in size. That was also created with the tween service. If you're excited for this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up because it helps me out a lot. And with that, let's get into it. Tweening is an abbreviation for in-betweening because we're generating the intermediate frames between two key points. So I'm gonna show you an example where we're gonna tween this green parts position to this gray parts position over here. And Roblox with tween service will interpolate or calculate the frames between the two. So it'll have a smooth animation from one position to the other. Now at the same time, I'm also going to tween this brick's color. So I'm gonna tween it from green to red, and you'll see that at the same time. Now I have it set up so that when I click this part, the tween will begin. So I'll click it, and as you can see, it's smoothly moving over to that part and turning red. I'll click it again, and it will reverse and go back to green. Now let's make something that we could actually use in an obby. So let's go ahead and go to the home tab and insert a part. And then inside of that part, let's insert a script. If you don't have the Explorer, go to View and then click on Explorer. The first thing that we're gonna do is get the tween service. So type local tween service equals game colon get service and then tween service. Then after that, let's get a reference to the part that we want to tween, which is the part that we just inserted, which is also the parent of this script. If you look over here, parent of the script is that part. Now we can actually create our tween. So type local part tween equals tween service colon create. And this is our first function to talk about, the create function. This function creates and returns a tween. So this will be a tween. The first argument is the part of the object that we want to actually tween. So we'll give it part. The second argument is the tween info. So tween info dot new. And there's actually a lot that you can do with this, that, which I'll talk about in just a second. But for now, we'll just have tween info dot new. Then last but not least is the properties that we want to tween, which is going to be inside of a dictionary. And I'll just type transparency. So the name of the property that we'll tween equals and then one. So this may be one of the more confusing parts of tweening. So this right here is a table of all the properties that we want to tween. So our part will start off how it currently is. So in the workspace right now, the transparency of this part, as you can see in the properties tab, is actually zero. And then after this tween, we're going to want the transparency to be equal to one. So these are the goals of the tween. By the time this tween is finished, the transparency of this part will be equal to one. Tweens won't actually play until we tell them to play. So I'm going to connect to the touched event of this part and play it whenever we touch a part. So I'll type part.touched colon connect and function. I'll type other part. And then here I'm going to check to see if a player has touched a part. So I'll type local humanoid equals other part dot parent colon find first child, which is a humanoid. And if you don't know how this works, be sure to check out my video on touch events and I'll explain all of this in that video. Don't need to then there, I actually got ahead, a little bit ahead of myself. So then we'll type if humanoid then. So basically all this is doing is saying, if a player has touched our part, then execute this code. And this is going to say, you know, this is actually checking to see if it was a player rather than just something like the, the base plate touching our part. And then here we'll actually play the tween. So we'll type part tween, colon play. And now we can go ahead and play the game. And as you can see, I'll walk over to this part and touch it and it turns transparent. Before I talk in detail about how tween info works, I'm going to talk about this last part, this goal dictionary. So if you don't know anything about tables, be sure to watch my video on tables for a complete explanation. But there's a bunch of different ways to make a table. You can actually make a separate variable and then just pass in that variable right here instead of creating the table in place. And if you're just tweening one property, so here we're only tweening the transparency, but if you want to tween multiple things, such as the color as well, then it might be useful to create a separate table. So up here, I'll type local goal equals, and then I'll just make the table just like that. And I can type goal.transparency. So this is how you add something to a table. Goal.transparency equals one. And then if I actually just copy and paste this, delete this, this is the same thing. So this is creating a table up here that looks like the one that we have right here. So let's see, I'll do uh, redo that. So this table, after executing this line, 
looks just like this. So if I want to add another property, I can type goal.color equals and then color3.new and then I'll just set this to red just like that and we can run the game again and as you can see when I touch it, it starts turning red but it also disappears so you can't see it when it finally gets there but there was a split second where it was turning red. Again, in addition to creating the table this way, you could also just directly add the parameters in here. So you could type, you know, transparency equals one, then a comma, and then you can do color equals color three dot new one zero zero. So that's another way to do it, but it's just up to you. It depends on, you know, how many properties you're adding and your organization of your code, how you want to do that. And pretty much between any numeric property with the tween service, here are the different types of properties that can be tweened. Anything that's a number, a Boolean, C-frame, and so on can be tweened. And if you're wondering how I know to put transparency to tween the transparency and color to tween the color, just go to the object that you want to tween. So in this example, I'm tweening this part. Go to the properties and then look at the name of the property itself. So if I want to tween the color, I need to put color and not color three. And that's because the name of the property is color and not color three. Now that I've covered the goal properties a decent amount, let's go back to the tween info and talk about that. Tween info controls how the tween is actually carried out. So that could be the time it takes for the tween to happen, the easing style and easing direction, which I'll show you in just a second, the repeat count, so how many times the tween is actually repeated, uh, whether or not the tween reverses once it's complete, and the delay before the tween actually happens. As I said before, easing style is one of the parameters for tween info. So you can choose between any of these different easing styles down here below. This is a visual representation of the tween easing styles. So at the top is linear and the tween speed of the tween rather remains linear, the constant the whole time. At the bottom you can see bounce, bounces a little bit. And you can also see that elastic actually overshoots. So we're tweening from left to right, but it overshoots a little bit outside of this black box bound. You can also see that the easing direction is on the bottom. So there's out versus in and you can see how they operate when they're switching. You know, elastic, when it's going in, it will actually overshoot in the beginning, and then when it's going out, it will do the opposite. There's also a description of all of these at the bottom of the page. Now that we have this extra information, let's create our own custom tween info. So right here, I'll type local info equals tween info dot new. And then I'll just do an enter and we can write out all of the different arguments to tween info. First again is the time. So let's go ahead and make this take two seconds. After that is the easing style. So I'll type enum dot easing style dot linear just to make this linear. And then I'll type enum dot easing direction because after that is the easing direction is just do out since linear doesn't really matter though. And then after this is the repeat count. So how many times we want the tween to repeat? We don't want it to repeat at all. So we'll just do zero. Reverses, so reverses will be true because we do want it to reverse. That way it goes from visible to invisible and then back. And then I'll set a delay time just so you can see it to one. Now that we've done that, we need to switch out our tween info right here. So I'll copy info and then change this out so we can have our custom tween info. I'll walk over to our part and as you can see, after one second, it starts to tween out and then it'll come right back in. Added some comments to make it a little bit easier for you to understand and process what's going on. It's reversing because we set reverse to true, but we can also make it do something else. We can make it repeat a few times. So I'll change this to one so it will repeat once. If I walk over to the part again and touch it, we'll see that the tween happens, comes back, and then it should happen once more. A few other things that I should cover. If you want to do a different easing style, they should co come up when you type enum.easing style. So just do enum.easing style and period. And then you should see all of the different options right here. It's best just to play around. You can look at that one you know, video that I showed you before that has the examples, but just mess around and see which ones you like. And then also for enum easing direction, just out. And then also, you'll see them both here. You do it in, in, out, and out. And then also I should say that for the repeat count, if you want it to repeat indefinitely, then you should not just do a big number, you should change this to negative one, and that will make the tween just continue to loop over and over and over. Now let's talk about a few more important features for tweens, and also cover a new example. So go to starter GUI, insert a screen GUI, inside of the screen GUI, insert a frame, 
inside of the screen GUI again, insert a local script. And then let's go back and let's just move this GUI right here, this frame. Doesn't really matter where you put it. Go back to the local script and let's start writing this script. We're gonna do the same thing as before. Just need to get the tween service. So game colon get service tween service. After that, let's get the frame that we want to tween. So local frame equals script dot parent. And actually uh, we'll need to do dot frame now because the script is in the screen GUI. And then let's just do the start size. So start underscore size equals frame dot size. And then we'll do goal size equals goal underscore size equals udem to dot new. And if you don't know, if you go to this frame, the size is actually a udem to. It's a, a Roblox type right there. And this current size is zero comma 100, zero comma 100. And let's just go ahead and set the goal side size to 200, zero 200, zero 200. So it's gonna double in size and the start size is just the current size of 0, 100, 0, 100. And we'll say local time equals 0 0.2. So these are just the properties that we're going to be tweening. Let's create the tween info again. We'll type local info equals tween info dot new. And then the properties, so we'll type time and then we'll type enum dot easing style dot linear again. Actually, let's uh, let's mix it up and just do do bounce and comma enum dot easing direction equals out again. And then we will do zero repeats. It will not reverse, so type false. And then we'll do zero delay. And then down here, we can start creating some tweens. And I'm going to be connecting to two events. So we're gonna name these mouse enter tween equals tween service colon create and then frame. So again, this is what we want to tween. We're gonna be tweening the frame. Then after that, the tween info, we created the tween info called info right here. And then last but not least is the properties that we want to tween. We're only going to be tweening the size here. So type size equals goal size. And I'm going to copy and paste this. So copy, paste, do mouse leave tween. Change the name right there. And then instead of goal size, we'll do start size. Now there is actually a different way to tween GUIs, and I'll be talking about that in a different tutorial, but the current method of using tween service and you know creating a tween info, all this, is going to work for tweens, or is going to work for frames rather, in any GUIs. The other feature is just uh, you know additional functionality that you can use and that can be useful. Again, that'll be in a future tutorial, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. So now we're going to connect to the mouse enter event. So frame dot mouse enter connect, and we'll create a function. So this event will be fired anytime our mouse enters this frame. So anytime we move the mouse just like that, that mouse enter event will be fired. Whenever we leave, the mouse leaves, the mouse leave event will be fired. So I'll copy this, so go down here, and we're going to do mouse leave. And now what we want to do, whenever the mouse is entering, we will play the mouse enter tween. Whenever the mouse is leaving, we will play the mouse leave tween. As you can see, when we play, I'll mouse over this and it'll kind of bounce and get larger. I'll leave it and it'll bounce again and be smaller. Then I'm going to cover the pause function as well as the playback state property. So go ahead and change the time to three seconds to slow down the tween a little bit. And then we're going to be connecting to the input began event of the frame. We'll do colon connect function, the input parameter right there. And then down here, we're going to check to see if the user input is a click. We're gonna to check to see if the user clicks the frame. Type if input dot user input type is equal to the mouse input or mouse button one. So enum dot input user input type rather dot mouse button one. Then, so basically this is gonna say, if the input that we're getting on this frame is a mouse button, so I left click, then we're gonna to check to see if the mouse enter tween dot playback state is equal to enum dot playback state dot playing. So then we're going to actually pause it. So type mouse enter tween pause. Otherwise we're going to play it. So I'll just copy and paste this. 
do else play and then let's talk about what's going on here so basically we're going to check to see if whenever the frame is interacted with if it's you know a click we're going to make sure that the user is clicking it if it is a click then we're going to check to see if the intertween is playing if it is we're going to pause it otherwise we're going to continue to play it let's talk about the playback state as you can see on the page for tween right here the playback state describes the current stage for the tween animation and a description of each state can be found on this page right here. So we'll click this and you can see there's a few different states that the tween could be in. The tween could be beginning to play, it could be delayed, you know, that delay uh, property or the parameter rather of tween info. It could be playing, it could be paused, completed, or canceled. So back here in this code, whenever the user clicks the frame, we're going to check to see if the tween is currently playing. If it is playing, we're going to pause it. Otherwise, we will continue to let it play. So now when we run the game, you'll see I mouse over this and I'm not going to click and it goes all the way back up and I'll mouse I'll leave it and it goes back down to the original size. But now I'm going to mouse over it, click and it pauses. I'll click again and play it and pause it again. And now we can pause and play it by clicking the mouse. One important function to talk about is the wait function. And this isn't just unique to tweens, this is for any event. We'll type mouse enter tween dot completed. There's a completed event, and this event for tweens will play whenever the tween is either completed or canceled. And a tween can be canceled by playing another tween over top of one. So if you have two tweens that are, you know, tweening a part's position, so if I have one tween that's trying to move this part to the left, one tween trying to move it to the right, if the first one I play is moving it to the left and I play another one, the first one will be canceled and I'll start moving to the right. But going back over here, we will connect this. So actually, we're going to wait for it to complete. We're doing colon wait. And this function will yield this thread right here. So nothing past this will execute, at least in this within this function, only within this function. Nothing past it will execute. So down here, I could type print the tween was completed. If we go back and play the game, you'll see that if I mouse over this and wait, it's gonna take a second. And you can see the tween was completed, was printed at the bottom. Let me make that a little bit bigger. See the tween was completed. I'll go back over again and click and pause it. And the tween was completed won't be printed until I go back and play it again. And we wait a second, the tween will complete and that's printed. So it can be really useful in a lot of different cases but that's not just unique to tweens, that's for any event. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Comment your questions below and subscribe for more in the future.